Okay, talking about hepatobiliary uh, pathology, which is just a fancy word for the liver and the gallbladder, right? Um, here's our objectives. We're going to talk about the anatomy and physiology of the system, talk about contrast considerations for imaging the system, uh, and then we're going to detail uh, some occurrences of pathology to include um, alcohol-induced liver disease, cirrhosis in particular, viral hepatitis, which is mostly just a warning, and then uh, cholelithiasis, which is the fancy word for gallstones, and we'll talk about additive and subtractive radiographic techniques. So the A and P that's important for us here um, is that what we're talking about is the liver, gallbladder, and biliary tree. The pancreas is closely related, but it's a different system, right? So we will talk a little bit about the pancreas, but it is its own different system. Um, and it shares a portion of the biliary ductal system, right? Specifically the ampulla of Vader. So the liver is the largest solid organ in the body. It is largely in the right upper quadrant. Um, it is held in place by the per per uh, peritoneal ligaments. So part of that um, peritoneum is holding the ligament in place as well as intra-abdominal pressure. So it's held together in place by these ligaments plus pressure within the abdomen. Um, the important point here is that this is a common point of trauma, right? If a person has rapid deceleration that can actually lacerate the liver with this ligament, right? The ligament can actually cut the liver in half because it's only held together by this one ligament and pressure. It functions for metabolism, synthesis of all sorts of stuff, most importantly blood clotting agents, detoxification and excretion, right? Um, it has a dual blood supply through the hepatic ar artery, which actually oxygenates the organ, and then the portal vein, which provides filtering for the whole abdomen. So it has a vein that basically enters from the rest of the abdomen, so it enters similar to an, ab an artery in that blood is flowing into it, but then flows out of the liver filtered. Okay, we need to be pretty comfortable with this biliary tree because when it comes to one of the main jobs that we have for this system, it is knowing the parts of this. So I have it listed here um, in the order in which junk flows through it, right? So there's the right and left hepatic ducts that come out of the liver, right, to the common hepatic duct. Then those join with the cystic duct, which is exiting the gallbladder, right, to form the common bile duct. Then eventually that's joined by the pancreatic duct, which adds its own special seasonings to the mix. And this small portion that runs from the pancreatic duct to the sphincter of Odie is called the ampulla of Vader, which is the most awesome name of any piece of anatomy in the entire body because of Darth Vader, although the spelling is different, right? But I did want to put this picture of Darth Vader on your slide. Um, pointing to the tiny part on here because it does not have indicated on here where exactly the pancreatic duct is just north would be slightly north of where Darth Vader is pointing right does he ever die? never not in my heart at least <laughs> uh, yeah he gets killed I think it's not completely clear what happens but it, you think maybe he does it seems to suggest that he does all right um, imaging considerations, we're going to need contrast on this mother if we want to see it, right? And so there's a bunch of different ways we're going to try to get the contrast to it. Um, one of the most common ways that we see contrast within the, within the, uh, I just drew a blank, within the biliary portion is going to be actually physically, surgically accessing the gallbladder, right? So have we all had a chance to assist on some kind of gallbladder procedure? Yeah, good. Well, that's what we're talking about here. Percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography, PCT. It means you stick a needle directly into the biliary tree by a puncture of the abdominal wall, and you can use that to distinguish medical jaundice from surgical jaundice, which means is this caused by an illness or caused by something else? Um, it can also be used to detect a calculi or tumor in the distal common bile duct. Um, low complications are as associated with it. And basically, we're just going to squirt contrast all throughout the biliary tree and see what's going on.
right? We can also do these really weird ERCP things, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, which means that we are induced, introducing an endoscopic tube, running it down into the patient's stomach, through their stomach, into the duodenum, up the sphincter of Odie to the ampulla of Darth Vader, right? And then we inject contrast through that. That sounds crazy to me. You're shaking your head like you've... I saw many of them when I was in surgery, and they're the coolest things because the little ducts are so tiny. Yeah. And then you just, I mean, all of a sudden, they're just in them. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the little guy bar just pops right over. So I guess it's it's preferable to surgery in some regards, but this will, like uh, like Bashirian saying, allow us to vis visualize the biliary system in the main pancreatic duct. And we'll use it along with uh, perhaps sonography or CT, and it can be used also as a form of interventional procedure. Okay, um, so it has evolved some. Uh, I only have this one picture of it, uh, but it sounds like uh, you've had uh, some positive experiences with. It. I've actually never assisted on one of these, so that's cool. Um, the one that I think I've assisted on the most is, is this is an actual T-tube cholangiogram, but operative cholangiography, um, where they've, they've removed the gallbladder, they've clamped it, they've applied a, a catheter to the, uh, one of, what, where they, the common bile duct or, or where have you. Um, I'm sorry, not the common bile duct, the cystic duct. They've placed a catheter in the cystic duct. And now they're going to watch the contrast flow through the cystic duct to the common bile duct and make sure that there's no stones in that area or that they didn't miss anything, that the, the clamps that they put are, in, are patent and in a good place and there's no bile getting out anywhere, right, before they pull the gallbladder out. Um, so you've probably had a chance to do this. Again, remember, right upper quadrant is the area that we're interested in. Um, so place your C-arm in that general area and the surgeon will like you. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right, so I'm switching gears now, and I'm going to talk about some actual inflammatory disease, and specifically alcohol-induced liver disease. Um, alcohol cannot be stored anywhere in the body, so the liver has to convert it to substances that reduce the cellular function, and this conversion jacks with the carbohydrate and lipid me metabolism, particularly within the liver. So it results in fatty concentrates within the liver, which should ring a bell. We talked about this in CT. We talked about placing ROIs on the liver and on the spleen. And if the, uh, the spleen um, had a higher Hounsfield unit than the liver, we knew that there was fatty infiltrated of the liver because liver fat is mostly water, and so that brings the Hounsfield units down. Um, it is the most frequent response to alcohol abuse. So if people are drinking frequently, they're going to have a fatty deposits within the liver. It, uh, this is a buildup of triglycerides within the liver, and it can be linked to uh, hepatomegaly, which is just a fancy word for big liver. Hepatomegaly, big liver. Um, CT imaging is gonna be the modality of choice, so I went ahead and just included a CT image showing the ROI placement. All right, so if this continues for a lengthy period of time and the alcohol abuse uh, becomes chronic, cirrhosis is probably the, the next thing that's going to happen. This is a chronic liver condition in which the liver parenchyma and architecture are destroyed by this fatty buildup, um, fibrous tissue is laid down, and then we see regenerative nodules that are formed. So this illustration on the top is showing, uh, the arrow on the, is showing this regenerative nodule area um, where the liver's trying to get some normal function back in there um, in, the, in, fat, in spite of all these fatty deposits, right? In addition to that, we often see ascites. So that's apparent on both of these images here as this dark fluid, right? That's a, the ascites, right? Um, so even if the cirrhosis isn't immediately apparent on the image, we see quite a bit of ascites that's in, indicative of uh, beginnings of cirrhosis. Um, so this results from chronic alcohol abuse, drugs, autoimmune disorders, uh, met metabolic and genetic disease, chronic hep hepatitis, cardiac problems, and chronic biliary tree obstructions, the fourth leading cause of death in the United States of America, 
of those ages 45 to 65 years of, of age. And again, I remember I told you to bookmark esophageal uh, varices. Here they are again, secondary to hemorrhage from esophageal varices. So the death can either be caused by liver failure or by the varices. The varices could rupture, right, because of in, impaired liver function. Are y'all tracking with me on that? So liver, just the liver, it stops working and the whole system shuts down or the slowed work of the liver causes blood backflow into the esophagus, which eventually ruptured a varicose vein in the esophagus. Okay, switching gears some, let's talk about inflammatory diseases. Um, and all I'm gonna say about viral hepatitis is, I don't, you don't wanna get it. It's probably one of those things that, the reason I've got this slide on here is probably you all think you're bulletproof or something, but I've known x-ray techs who have gotten hepatitis and it sucked, right? Mm -hmm. I can't say that emphatically enough. So don't screw around about universal precautions, right? Um, it is very common. Um, it has at least six different viral agents that can cause the disease and interferes, interferes with the ability to excrete bilirubin, which just means bile pigment. Um, but it also sounds like a really good name for like, kind of like a, like a farmer, you know, like, hi, my name's Billy Rubin. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, signs, symptoms include nausea and vomiting, discomfort, tenderness in the liver area. So they'll press on you. Does this hurt? Yes, it does. Okay. Jaundice, which means you're turning yellow. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, this is basic skills, all right. Um, hepatomegaly, again, big liver and laboratory results are going to be needed at some point. All these things, wash your hands, wear gloves, wear the appropriate PPCs, wear your masks, dispose of dirty stuff appropriately, clean crap off, please, for the love of God, clean stuff off. Don't recap your sharps, even though you've seen the physician do it a thousand times, right? Inflammatory diseases also can include uh, cholelithiasis, which just means gall stones, right? Um, these are fairly common. So again, anytime you see the word common, red flag, important stuff. Sludge builds up into stones, which sounds great to me. Um, the occurrence rate is about 20% of folks get them. Gals are more likely than the guys. It is linked to obesity and diet. Um, so it's very, becoming more common here in the United States of America. Symptoms are generally just kind of a bloated feeling. But if it continues, if they get bad enough, we can talk about right, up, right upper quadrant pain, right? So if you see that on a requisition, that ain't talking about the appendix. That's talking about the gallbladder. It's a totally different thing. And they probably need to have an ultrasound first because it is best visualized with ultrasound, no radiation involved. Um, and the nice thing about ultrasound is these three things. It has an echogenic focus, so we can actually possibly tell what the composition of it is. Um, it, we see acoustic shadowing, and that's apparent here. We see these shadows. These are the stones. These are the stones. We see these shadows coming off the stones, which tell us that there's something heavy here that shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. right? And then finally, gravitational dependence. They're down here, because that's the bottom of the gallbladder in this picture. So it's actually a very, very valuable study. In fact, oftentimes, if gallbladders, if gallstones are seen on CT, the doctor says follow up with ultrasound. It's one of those rare times when, like, ultrasound uh, it beats out CT. Um, treatment, surgery, approximately half a million of them are performed annually, right? So they should have that on the sign at McDonald's, if you ask me. All right. Um, this, you'll notice, I included on here because we have a little bit of both. We have some additive, we have some subtractive, which makes the hepatobiliary system the biggest pain in the butt in terms of all the additive subtractive stuff, right? Know that the one that they like to ask the most about is the cirrhosis one. They love cirrhosis questions, right? Um, that's why I spent so much time on it today. Um, if it's fatty infiltration, it's subtractive. Surprise, right? Why? Because of what we talked about earlier in the summer with CT. Fat has less density than muscle tissue or organ tissue. So if there's fat in the liver, that's subtractive. There's fat in the liver. But if there's so much fat in the liver that cirrhosis is going on and we've got hepatomegaly, boom, it just kind of switched over and it became additive. So they love these trick questions. 
because they want to make sure you really they're not just it's, I don't know why they ask these questions I guess it's because it's the liver's a big organ right but think through this with me okay person is drinking a lot of alcohol the alcohol has to be metabolized by the liver and it's it's making a lot of triglycerides a lot of fat inside the liver right fat floats on water so in terms of x-ray interactions the x-rays get through it easier right X-rays get through a fatty liver easier. It seems counterintuitive, but X-rays get through a fatty liver easier. Therefore, it's subtractive, right? Person continues to drink alcohol. Now we've got cirrhosis going on. Depending on what stage it is, it could be more fatty liver, so it's subtractive, or if they start to develop ascites, guess what? It just switched and it became additive. Why? Because now we've got a huge liver and we've got the buildup of fluid, the backflow of blood and fluid into the liver, causing even more increased density. So it just became additive. They want you to know that process. It's a significant process because of what it's doing with our x-rays. It's also significant because it's linked in part to the way contrast goes through the body, right? The liver is going to be part of what gets rid of the contrast. So they want you to know that physiology of the liver pretty intimately. Um, then it gets uh, weird around the colon, can the cancers related to this stuff, and you'll notice I didn't talk about cancer at all. It just seemed like really low yield to me. Um, so I did not include any of the cancer stuff from this section. Um, it just, is, is there issues there? Yes, maybe. I just, let's just focus on the liver and we'll be good, okay?